Now, ladies and gentlemen, when we're looking at triangles, um, or really just any kind of figure, it's very easy to determine if two triangles, it's very easy to determine if two triangles are kind of equal or what their congruent parts are if they're kind of like right next to each other. You can say that's A, B, C, D, E, F, right? That's what I did before. OK? You guys can kind of see, if I said, what does angle A congruent to? Angle A, Mario, would be congruent to? D, right? Because it's in the exact same kind of location. You could also see that the measure of each of those angles are congruent. So measure of angle A is congruent to angle D. And those are what we call a con corresponding parts. All right, They're exact same shape. Um, are the exact same size, and they're like in the same location of your triangle. However, ladies and gentlemen, that's not always going to, uh, it's not always going to be as simple as this, all right? Now we know angle A is congruent to angle D, but let's go and change it up a little bit. Let's say I have something now that looks like this. D, E, F. Okay, it's a little bit more, it's a little bit more difficult now to determine what are your corresponding parts, correct? However, you can still look at, notice these corresponding parts have the exact same measurement. So then, Samantha, if I still want to continue with this, if I say angle B, what would you say angle B is going to be congruent to over here on this triangle? Angle E. And the reason being is angle, you can see this angle has two tick marks. That angle has two tick marks. Therefore, the measure of those two angles are congruent. So those are congruent parts. So you can say angle B is congruent to angle E. And then, obviously, if we know two angles are equal to each other, we know that the third, the last, the third angles have to be equal to each other is equal to angle F, all right? But corresponding parts, ladies and gentlemen, are not just limited to angles. Because remember, if you are going to have two congruent triangles, you have to have the angles equal in measure, but as well as Asia, what else? The, what else has to be congruent? Not just the angles, the sides. So therefore, I can write AB has to be congruent to what do you think, Jessica? AB has to be congruent to what side over here on this triangle? Dun, dun, dun. What do you think? Should it be DE or ED? DE. Because notice that, see, these both have one tick mark, right? So you know that this side has to be congruent to this side, right? But then we go through our corresponding parts. Since A is congruent to D, so if I say AB, then I should do DE, because D and A are corresponding parts. Make sense? So therefore, we can say this is corresponding to DE. And make sure you put a line over these. Remember, notice how I'm putting these angles for angles, line for line. Dennis, is, you got it? OK. Um, so now, let's just go and finish this up. I could also do BC is congruent. So Sam's going to B to C. Now again, I need to look at what is B corresponding to. B's corresponding part is E. So therefore, it's going to go to EF. And then finally, I could do CA is corresponding to going back um, to FD. All right. Now, when looking at corresponding parts, you are going to have congruent triangles if and only if your, all your corresponding parts are equal in measure. All right. So this, these two are corresponding angles. The reason being is because all their angles and all their sides are congruent. Make sense? OK. Good. OK.